Welcome back to the channel everyone. If you're new, I'm Megan Remedy, holistic nutritionist, and I make videos on various health topics. Right now, lately, I have been covering a lot of the ex-vegan topics because I am currently going through that myself. Um, but my channel will be kind of evolving into more health topics in the future. So if you're interested in any of that, please hit the subscribe button to join the health community here on my channel. Now, today's video, we are going to be talking about vegetables, um, the dark side of vegetables and why they are not the best option, especially when you're sick and when you're healing from various different ailments. Before we get into this video, I wanted you, the viewer, if you haven't studied plants or studied herbal medicine, to have a little idea of what the point of plants is. So me personally studying herbal medicine, plants have an action. Every plant has an action. Every plant does something and interacts with your body in a certain way. Uh, every plant has a certain toxicity level where too much of a good thing is no longer a good thing. There's different plants that are toxic to different species, etc. The point of me bringing this up is that every plant has an action. And by action, I mean um, it does something to the body. So, for example, a diaphoretic. That is an action of an herb and that means that it will make you sweat antiparasitic that is another action of a herb and that means that it kills parasites antifungal kills fungus analgesic relieves pain an adaptogen helps your body adapt to stress a diuretic increases urinary filtration and an amenagogue has a specific action on the uterus but i think you get the point by now there's many more actions but the point of me bringing this up is that when you consume plants, they are doing something to you. Each plant has an action, even vegetables. So it's important to understand the actions and the properties of plants to understand what they are doing to your body. Now in the case of a vegan diet, if all you're eating is plants, all you're consuming is medicine. You're not consuming any building foods. Now this may sound good, but if you're consuming the wrong medicine, it will create disease. If you're consuming too much medicine, it will also create disease. So knowing that, we can see where people would get into trouble on a long-term vegan diet and why they feel so good when they first start. It is a form of medicine. It is a form of detox when they first start, but you can over detox. Not only do plants have actions, but they also have anti-nutrients. And I know that the anti-nutrients have been diminished by the vegan community because they don't think that they are much of an issue, but science would say otherwise. And the many ex-vegan testimonials that we have floating around on the internet would also say different. And I have experienced this myself and with clients that anti-nutrients in plants are a real thing. Now, if you eat a cup of beans here and there, you're not going to notice much of a difference unless you're very sensitive. If you have a good digestive system, you won't notice much of a difference. But where we run into trouble is when you're consuming this as your primary source of fuel, your primary source of protein, consistently... And especially if you have a under-functioning digestive tract. Plants can be particularly irritating. So when it comes to the study of herbs and herbal medicine and how to use them and apply them, there are specific doses, specific ways, and it can get very complicated. Certain herbs can't be taken with other herbs. Certain herbs can't be taken with pharmaceutical medications. Certain herbs can't be taken with certain conditions because they will make other conditions worse. The list goes on. So you really have to be knowledgeable about plants and really understand how they affect the body. 
some are cooling some are warming and this can also sway the body into disease or into health so it's all about context where the person is the constitution of the person and how to bring that person and help that person get back to homeostasis so in this video today i'm going to discuss some common dangers or anti-nutrients of foods that are commonly consumed in this modern diet especially in a vegan diet and why they can be so harmful to the body so if you don't like vegetables you might want to stay tuned for this video because you're gonna like what i have to say if you're experiencing digestive issues you also are going to want to stick around because these plant foods could be the reason why you cannot heal your digestive issues Oxalates or oxalic acid is a natural occurring compound found in leafy green plants, nuts, grains, and legumes. Oxalic acid causes problems because it binds to calcium in the body, forming oxalates or stones. Oxalates inhibit calcium absorption or worse can lead to kidney stones. According to the Chicago Dietetics Association, individuals with kidney stones are told to decrease oxalate intake to lower than 50 to 60 milligrams per day and less than 10 milligrams per serving. A study in the Journal of Food Composition and Analysis in 2005 found that oxalate content ranged from 37 to 269 milligrams or 100 grams in certain grain flours. Buckwheat and whole wheat were the worst offenders. White and brown rice contain the least amount of oxalates. The study concluded that diets which are heavily based on flour products may increase predisposition to calcium oxalate containing kidney stones in susceptible individuals. Also, these oxalic acid crystals can lodge in other parts of the body and cause extreme pain. They can harm cells and cause many different disturbances within the body. Goitrogens. Many vegetables, like the cruciferous vegetables, are goitrogens. Goitrogens are substances that suppress the function of the thyroid by inhibiting the formation of the thyroid hormone. Goitrogens are found in all cruciferous vegetables, including but not limited to soybeans, broccoli, cauliflower, bok choy, cabbage, cress, and Brussels sprouts. Eating a lot of raw cruciferous veggies can suppress your thyroid, leading to a slower metabolism and increased metabolic hormone disturbance. This means weight gain and hormonal problems. If you're dead set on eating these vegetables, you can cook them for more than 30 minutes to reduce the goitrogens in these foods, but we all know that cooking foods for a long amount of time can reduce the nutrient content as well. Lectins. Lectins are carbohydrate binding proteins found in plants, seeds, legumes, grains, and nuts. Foods high in lectins are associated with gastrointestinal distress, leading to diarrhea, nausea, bloating, and vomiting. Just like the lectins in leafy greens, the lectins in grains can interfere with plasma repair in the gut lining. Therefore, lectins became toxic to wounds healing in the gut. If someone is celiac or has a grain intolerance, lectins would exacerbate the individual's issue. Besides grains, the worst offenders of lectins are legumes, beans, and soy, and many vegetables. Phytates or phytic acid. Phytates are found in soy, seeds, nuts, and are antioxidant compounds found in whole grains. Phytates work by blocking or inhibiting the absorption of other nutrients. Phytates block the uptake of essential nutrients, zinc and copper, and to a lesser degree, calcium and magnesium. Cooking, soaking, or spreading the seeds can lessen the degree of phytic acid, but it is still present. Trypsin inhibitors. Trypsin inhibitors are also referred to as protease inhibitors, and they can block trypsin and other enzymes needed for proper digestion of protein. 
these enzymes produced by the pancreas can overburden the pancreas and lead to pancreatic disorders. Trypsin inhibitors can also lead to digestive distress and a diet deficient in proper amino acid uptake. These inhibitors are in many plant foods like soybeans, grains, cereals, and legumes. So if we are eating these foods as the sole source of protein, are we really digesting and absorbing the amount that we need with all of these anti-nutrients and inhibitors? Lignans Lignans are phytoestrogens found in plants. They have estrogenic-like properties and can cause hormonal disturbances. The biggest offenders are seeds like flax and sesame seeds and cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, and Brussels sprouts. If you have estrogen dominance, you should definitely avoid these foods. Pectin. Pectin is a polysaccharide long carbohydrate molecule that the body cannot break down. Pectin is a soluble, dissolves in water, fermentable fiber found in the cell walls of above ground vegetables and fruits, especially the skin. High pectin levels can disrupt digestion and lead to increased endotoxins and serotonin in the gut. Pectin has been linked to increasing carcinogenic tumor size in the colon. Besides vegetables, unripe fruits are also high in pectin, especially pears and apples. As a fruit becomes more ripe, its pectin levels are lower. Cooking vegetables and fruits will help break down the pectin. Ripe and cooked fruits and vegetables are easier for our body to digest and less taxing on our digestive system. Lignans. Lignin, similar to pectin, is a polysaccharide. Lignin is also a fermentable fiber found in the cell walls of plants. Unlike pectin, lignin is an insoluble fiber. It cannot be dissolved in water. In a 1998 study in the nutrition and cancer, ingestion of lignins was associated with increased uterine cancer. Lignin is also associated with reproductive issues, enlarged spleen, liver, stomach issues, and increased level of bile acids which have been linked to colon cancer. Lignin can be found in vegetables, fruits, and grains. Lignin's negative effect can be decreased with ripe and cooked foods. Polyunsaturated fats, also known as PUFAs, are not found in massive quantities in most vegetables, but they are found in plants. PUFAs are present and they can affect proper digestion of foods. According to nutritional researcher and biologist Dr. Ray Peet, unsaturated fats themselves are important defenses. Since they inhibit trypsin and other proteolytic enzymes, preventing the assimilation of the proteins that are present in the seeds and leaves and disrupting all biological processes that depend on protein breakdown, such as the formation of thyroid hormone and the removal of blood clots. Along with all the anti-metabolic effects of the above-ground vegetables, they are also very high in fiber, which can irritate a damaged gut. The overconsumption of polyunsaturated fatty acids, especially oxidized polyunsaturated fatty acids, which these are very susceptible to oxidation, are linked to many chronic illnesses. If you want to learn more, you can look into Ray Pete's work. Gluten. Gluten is a storage protein in all grains. Yes, all grains, including oats, corn, rice, and quinoa, contain a form of gluten. Gluten is not just one type of grain protein. Gluten consists of a family of more than 1,000 different types of grain proteins consisting primarily of glutalins and prolamines. Both glutalins and prolamines are storage proteins found in the endosperm of a grain's seed. Gluten is a hard to digest protein and can lead to digestive resistance in many people. Since gluten is hard to digest, gluten can feed bacteria in the stomach and cause a bacterial overgrowth. 
these byproducts can damage the gut and lead to intestinal permeability. Increased permeability will allow toxins, bacteria, and undigested food particles to leak through the intestinal walls into the bloodstream. As the gut increases permeability, the body may produce an immune response and the body will start attacking the proteins. This can lead to a gluten allergy, creates an immune system response, or celiac disease, an autoimmune condition that attacks its own tissue. Cellulose. Cellulose is a polysaccharide and is the structural component of the primary cell wall in green plants. Cellulose is an insoluble fiber, also known as roughage. Unlike ruminant animals like cows and horses, humans cannot digest cellulose. In a healthy person, cellulose is a safe fiber. It helps speed up the transient time of stool and acts like a bulking agent. However, in a person with a compromised digestive tract, cellulose may actually increase toxic load, inflammation, and irritation in an already damaged gut. In the book, The Fiber Menace, Constantin, I think that's how you pronounce his name, explains how external factors poor diet, stress, chemicals, processed foods can compromise bowel movements and irritate the gut lining. When the gut is damaged, the normal bacteria inside the colon are first to suffer because bacteria make up the most of the bulk of normal stools. 75% of stool is water. Once they're gone, stools harden because the bacteria are no longer there to retain water soften the stools and provide stool bulk after the bacteria are gone and we become constipated we are told to start eating more fiber to replace their function for a while the increased fiber will appear to be working the insoluble fiber makes stools voluminous and not as hard however in the if the gut is not healed and you are just adding more fiber you're not restoring the gut's normal bacteria Regularity is not happening by restoring the body's natural bacteria in bulk, but by replacing it with an outside bulking agent, which is fiber, similar to the effect of Metamucil, but instead with vegetables. For a while, the problems are hidden because you don't feel them as much, yet. Like so many things in the health industry, adding fiber to a dysfunctional gut is in the form of cellulose only acts like a band-aid. Added fiber does not help heal the gut, it just disguises the dysfunction of the digestive system for a while. Over time, the increased stool size will start to lead to more irritation and inflammation of the intestinal lining. Since most of our nutrients are absorbed through the walls of the small intestine, the increased inflammation will inhibit proper nutrient absorption. In addition, in the damaged gut, undigested foods like cellulose can become the breeding ground for bacteria. Due to the damaged intestinal area, stools move slower, leading to increased toxic load. The longer your undigested food stays in your body, the more toxic it can become to your system. If we continue to eat tons of fiber and, in and avoid actually healing the gut, our digestive problems will begin to turn into hemorrhoids, diverticulitis, irritable bowel syndrome, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, and even worse, colon cancer if left too long. Now let's reiterate, cellulose is not essentially a bad fiber, but too much of a good thing can be bad. It's a safe fiber in healthy people, but anybody with a damaged digestive tract or any digestive disorder should heavily decrease the amount that they consume. If someone who has a compromised metabolic state and has slow digestion, eating leafy green vegetables seems to only contribute to the problem versus helping to solve it. B6, pyridoxine glucoside, also known as PNG. PNG is a form of B6 found in plants, particularly cruciferous vegetables. According to a study in the American Journal for Clinical Nutrition, the presence of PNG in plants can decrease the bioavailability of B6 by 75 to 
Essentially, although plants contain vitamin B6, the fact that it is in the PNG form makes B6 very hard to get only from plants. PNG is found in grains as well. Animal sources of B6, pyridoxal phosphate and pyridoxamine phosphate, have almost 100% bioavailability. Vitamin B6 is a water-soluble vitamin. It can be found in three forms, PNG, PLP, and PMP. PNG is found in plants and grains. PLP and PMP are found in animal sources. PLP is the active form of B6 and is the cofactor in a multitude of metabolic functions. These include protein, fat, sugar metabolism, neurotransmitter transmission, hemoglobin and histamine synthesis, and gene expression, as well as amino acid synthesis. The most bioavailable sources is beef, liver, eggs, milk, potatoes, and bananas. So if this video was a little overwhelming for you because you learned a lot of new information and you don't really know what to eat anymore, then please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you can get notified when I post the next video, which will be explaining what plant foods have less anti-nutrients in them that are safer to eat or that are beneficial to eat to complement a nutrient-dense animal-based diet. That will be the next video. So thank you guys so much for watching. Remember, if you like my content, please share it, please comment, and please like because that really helps me get the word out and reach more people. The more people that we reach, the more people that we can impact and help them in their health journey. So I would really appreciate that. And until the next video, happy healing.